I have implemented all those things for myself. I am producing now plenty of milk. I have boxes and boxes of milk stored in a freezer. My name is Veronica and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel I make videos on lifestyle, nutrition, DIYs and organization. I hope you can stick around. If you like this kind of videos, please subscribe and hit the little bell button if you don't want to miss my next video. I want to make a little disclaimer. I am not a certified lactation consultant, so this is simply my story of how my breastfeeding journey went. Consult with your doctor, talk to your lactation consultant, and only then make any decisions on how you would proceed with your breastfeeding journey. My baby was born at 5.5 pounds, so it is borderline uh, low body weight. He had low blood glucose at birth, which has to be monitored and resolved by the time you get released from the hospital. He had some jaundice. It does cause sluggishness and babies sleep a lot. So those three issues would initially cause me having any troubles with breastfeeding. And I'll explain why. For the blood glucose to get normalized, you have to have food in your tummy. But when you give birth, your milk doesn't come in right away. It takes actually quite a long time for me. It took almost a week for, milk, uh, for my milk to fully develop. But you have to correct blood glucose within the first 36 hours after birth and then you get released from the hospital. So I had to give him something and since I didn't have milk, my only choice was formula. The nurse brought me a bottle of formula and I started giving him formula and soon enough blood glucose was uh, re-established, everything was fine, we were re released from the hospital. I was told to continue feeding him formula until my milk comes in just to make sure that his blood glucose levels don't drop again. After my milk comes in just basically not to worry about it and breastfeed as usual. And I didn't know that actually if you do feed the baby through a bottle he might develop nipple confusion. So that's basically he would have a hard time understanding how to eat from the breast because eating from a bottle is so different compared to eating from the breast. My baby got used to the bottle really early on. Two things, bottles give you really fast flow of milk. At the breast, the baby has to work really hard to get milk. At the bottle, he just basically has to chug, chug, chug. Second thing, the feeling of the breast and the bottle are very different. All of that causes the baby prefer the bottle over the breast and then have really hard time understanding how do you eat from the breast. So when they're hungry, they'll go for the bottle, not for the breast. The second thing is that my baby was jaundiced in the beginning, so he was really tired and sleepy and I would just let him sleep four hours in a row if he wanted to. When really I should have been breastfeeding him or at least pumping and that's something I didn't know. Your milk gets established within the first 10 to 14 days after birth. So this is a critical window for you to take advantage of and for you to breastfeed or pump, preferably both, uh, as much as possible so that your body knows how much milk it should be producing. You breastfeed uh, all around the clock at hours of the night and through the day and if you do that, you wouldn't have to do what I had to do, which is relactate, which is re-establish milk supply later on. And that's a lot harder than investing those 10 to 14 days postpartum to establishing really good milk supply from the get-go. Going with a good breast pump is the number one thing you can do for yourself. Even if your milk supply is great, you can always use breast pump and if it's a good quality breast pump you can pump efficiently and quickly and not just stimulate your milk supply and get more of it but also save some milk for later in case you do want to stop breastfeeding 
earlier but want to continue feeding your baby milk for longer if you introduce bottle early on you might have something called nipple confusion when your baby has really hard time drinking from your breast and understanding how to drink from your breast and might be refusing to drink from it but if you have to feed your baby before your milk comes in so what are some options there is actually a number of them you can actually successfully feed your baby for a syringe and that would never cause nipple confusion because it's so different of the way the baby eats for a syringe uh, compared to when it eats from the bottle another way you can feed your baby is through a cup these are called supplemental feeding systems so it's a cup a syringe and another one which is very popular one is supplemental nursing system i'll link some videos down below how you get what you do how you use them and again it's really simple and it will never cause nipple confusion later on you can still use the bottles use a wide neck bottle these are bottles that resemble the shape of the human breast and the feel of the breast so that the baby doesn't get confused between the bottle and the breast another crucial point that again i have missed on is eating well which is really oh i got a guest <laughs> so i have completely messed up on eating as well which is ironic since I am a dietitian and I should know better than not to eat. But when my baby was born, I was so overcome with all the maternal feelings, being in complete awe with the fact that I became a mom, that I would just stare at him while he was sleeping instead of eating. Eat eat and drink and take care of yourself because you still have a body to maintain ah uh, that's my take-home message on food as a dietitian who failed to feed herself yeah when my milk supply dried to a point of couple drops a day it was so stressful it was so hard it was devastating and worst of all i was missing out if you are a mom who is dealing with low milk supply and uh, relactation and all those thoughts and feelings my heart goes to you i'm so sorry you have to go through this but you know what you can get out of it and i promise if you work at it and I know it sounds ridiculous but not stress about it uh, i wouldn't be the right person to tell you not to stress because i stress so much but honestly you can do it so if you anyway. miss those 10 to 14 days when breast milk supply should be established there are things that you can do and i don't be discouraged number one pump I pumped every two to three hours. Number two is to try to get your baby to go on a breast even for a little bit before each pump. Do skin to skin. Uh, I even heard taking a bath with the baby, being in that warm environment with the baby helps to reestablish connection. Having your baby close to your body will help your body to understand that more milk needs to be produced sleeping it seems like a such a simple concept and i was really skeptical about it how can it make any difference but it does it does when i was co-sleeping with my baby uh, it, i produced so much more milk to compare to when he was in his in a separate room in everything is baby carriers Having your baby snuggled and sleeping on your chest, it kickstarts your milk supply as well. So having your baby close to you as much as possible for as long as possible really does do the trick. Make sure you're doing it safely. If he's co-sleeping, he's in a bassinet or a co-sleeper. If he's in a carrier, he's in an appropriate carrier and you know, you're following all the rules. 
So my final point on uh, relaxation would be understanding the letdown reflex. The letdown reflex is basically what causes milk production and ultimately what leads to more milk. Inefficient letdown reflex leads to insufficient uh, quantities of milk. Efficient letdown reflex leads to more milk. So how does that work? I have made this little animation up here uh, that shows you exactly what happens. To speak simply, your baby is on your breast and it causes a nerve stimulation. Nerve stimulation goes straight to your brain and then your brain tells your uh, breast to release milk. And that happens because the brain produces happy hormones, oxytocin and prolactin. So these hormones are the ones that stimulate production of your breast milk and tells, tell your breast to release that milk to your baby. There is really good video on uh, um, letdown reflux, more scientific than what I have described it. And I have linked it down below, so please check it out. Take home message from that. When your breast being stimulated, your brain is the one that causes the reaction. So I thought that it was more uh, localized. Your baby drinks the milk and the breast releases it on its own. I didn't know there was any feedback mechanism going to your brain and your brain tells your breast what to do. Uh, I had no idea about that. And I think once I understood that mechanism, that gave me a lot more understanding what I should be doing. Because the letdown reflex, for it to be working well, so think about it. So your baby's on the breast, it signals your brain, produce oxytocin, produce prolactin, but these are happy hormones. What if you're really stressed at that moment? From physiology and what we know, if you want to produce happy hormones, you can't be in an unhappy state. And stress is an unhappy state. Not a happy state means that those happy hormones are not gonna be produced, which is really, if you think about it, pretty simple. So if you're stressed at that moment, you can't really be making that milk efficiently. So what can you do in order to get those happy hormones flowing freely and not to be blocked by this stress? Best thing to do is to relax. Relax and find a way that relaxes you, whether it's just looking at your baby or for me personally, when I'll be, um, if I wasn't breastfeeding that, you know, I could be looking at my baby, I would be pumping, which is so mechanical and doesn't give you the same emotions. I was watching some movies that made me happy and that really did the trick. I produced so much more milk when I was watching the happy movies. Uh, yeah, you signal your brain to be in a peaceful, happy state and it does the rest. So another critical point that I was actually told by a lactation consultant that for your milk to be produced during the day, you have to be pumping or breastfeeding at night. You pump or feed your baby between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. The reason for that is because your prolactin, the hormone that produces milk, prolactation hormone, it is being produced at night between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. If you miss uh, that window, you might have a drop in your milk supply. I have implemented all those things for myself and it did change the game. I am producing now plenty of milk. I have boxes and boxes of milk stored in a freezer for when I want to stop breastfeeding. So. It worked, it worked. And uh, just to sum up, eat well, don't stress, you can do it. Make sure you pump a lot every two to three hours. I pumped continuously 10 minutes on one breast, 10 minutes on the other, followed by three minutes on one and three minutes on the other. And I did that every two to three hours uh, around the clock. I only gave myself about four to five hours at night. 
uh, just to sleep but during the day I'll be back on sometimes I'll do it even every hour if I felt like my milk is dropping but I would never miss my um, night window before four months of age I would pump at 12 a.m. at 3 a.m. and at 6 a.m. after four months I would pump at 12 a.m. and at 4 a.m. if I could do it so can you trust me it, it, it is possible so if you want to have a concise pocket size information on everything that I have touched on as well as some bonus information please check out my Etsy store where I have posted an ebook of the my breastfeeding journey and I have linked it down below it, please look in the description hope you enjoyed this video I'm looking forward to recording part two on exclusive pumping and milk storage please like and subscribe please comment down below whether you're relactating or exclusive pumper or whatever your breastfeeding journey is let me know i'll be happy to answer any questions or just to chat about your journey breastfeeding has been such a huge part of my life in the past eight months that yeah i love talking about it <laughs> thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time Bye bye